All right, let's jump right in. We're tackling the fixer. Simple ideas to grow your business today. Sounds right up our alley. It really does. I mean, who doesn't love a few straightforward tips to, you know, boost their business? And you and I both, we both know you're all about that growth mindset. Absolutely. And what I find interesting about this book is how it champions simplicity. Mm -hmm. In a business world that's always chasing the next, you know, the next big thing, Johnson and L, they make a case that sometimes the most straightforward solutions yeah. are the most effective ones. Like getting back to basics. Exactly. But in a powerful way. Yeah. Not just like, oh, yeah, remember that thing we used to do? Like, yeah. No, this is like back to basics. Strategic simplicity. Yes. With like intention. Yeah. And they would know, right? These authors have a combined 80 years of experience. That's a lot of wisdom. They've seen it all. And you know what they compare their approach to? What's that? Mozart. Really? Okay, I'm intrigued because at first that seems a little out there. Right. But what's the connection? So they're saying just like Mozart used the same notes as everyone else. Okay. But he created these masterpieces. Right. This book is kind of reminding us of those effective business principles ah. that maybe we already know but we've forgotten about. Right. We need that reminder. Or maybe we're not using them to their full potential. It's about implementation. Right. Exactly. It's not just knowing the notes. It's playing them in a way that creates magic. A hundred percent. So, OK, I'm hooked. I'm ready. What are these magical Mozart like business principles they're sharing? They break it down into 12 key lessons, all centered around what they call the organizational effectiveness triangle. OK, I love a good visual. Break that down for me. Picture this. You've got your product or service, right? Right. That's one side of the triangle. Okay. Then you've got what your customer wants and needs. Okay. Another side. Exactly. And the third side is your business's ability to connect those two. So it's like everything's got to work together. Exactly. It's like a three-legged stool. You need all three legs to be strong for the whole thing to work. And I'm guessing most businesses, at least one of those legs is a little wobbly. You're right. And here's where it gets really interesting for your listeners. The authors claim that most businesses are leaving massive profit potential on the table. Okay, I'm listening. I love profit potential. Tell me more. We're talking doubling, even multiplying profits by like five or ten right. times. Right. Hold up. Wait. Five to ten times? What are they, wizards? How? What's the secret sauce? They call them profit drivers. Yeah. And they're not about some crazy, you know, reinventing the wheel. Okay. It all comes down to, one, understanding your business philosophy, two, having a super clear strategy. Okay. And three, building relationships that go beyond just, you know, surface level. Okay, let's dig into that relationship piece for a second because I think we can all agree, like, networking is huge, right? Absolutely. But I'm sensing they're going a little deeper than, hey, here's my business card. Oh, way deeper. It's not just about who you know, it's about who they know too. Okay, so it's like that, it's that whole six degrees of separation thing. Exactly. But applied strategically to your business. Right, leverage those connections. So how do you do that without, you know, seeming like you're just using people? Like, how do you walk that line? That's where the giving aspect comes in. Okay. They're big on building those genuine relationships, offering value up front, sharing information freely to build trust. So it's a long game. Exactly. Think of it like planting seeds, not just harvesting crops. I can get behind that. All right. So we're building relationships. We're clear on our why, our strategy. What else makes a business hum? They use this analogy of a vending machine. Okay. It's about making your operations so streamlined, so customer focused okay. that it delivers that value consistently every single time, just like a well-oiled vending machine. I love a good analogy. So no more like reinventing the wheel with every customer interaction. Exactly. It's about building a system that basically works on autopilot. I like the sound of that. Right. Delivering that consistent, awesome experience we were just talking about. Love it. But of course, your vending machine is only as good as what you stock it with. Exactly. And that's where your unique selling proposition comes in your USP. Right. That special sauce, that thing that makes you stand out from the crowd. And they have this challenge. Try explaining your USP in 60 seconds or less. Oh, I like that. Really forces you to distill your business down to its core value. Right. Like an elevator pitch, but for your entire business's soul. Exactly. Love it. Okay, so we've got our messaging down, but how do they suggest, you know, actually getting that message out there? How do they tackle the sales side of things? They're all about data-driven decisions when it comes to sales. Okay, I like the sound of that. I'm all about data. They advocate for using what they call simple key result ratios. Okay, 
simple key result ratios. Can mm -hmm. you give me an example? I'm all about actionable advice. Absolutely. So let's say you're tracking how many leads actually convert into paying customers. Okay. Yeah. That ratio leads to customers. That's a key result you would measure. Gotcha. And by analyzing that, you can see what's working, where you're excelling, and where there might be some room for improvement. So instead of just like throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks, right. you're being strategic. Exactly. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so it's not just about the numbers though, right? It's about the people behind those numbers. Absolutely. And I think this is something that Johnston and Val really emphasize that human element. They do. They talk about how finding a great salesperson, it's not just about, you know, finding someone who can sell ice to Eskimos. It's about finding someone who can sell you on themselves. Huh, right. Like they get it. They get you. They get your product. They have that passion. They believe in what you're doing. Exactly. And that's huge. Speaking of people, this book seems to really like champion the idea of building a strong team. Absolutely. They have a whole section dedicated to what they call unleashing your people power. Which makes sense, right? Because even if you've got the best vending machine system in the world, you need amazing people right. to keep those snacks stocked. Exactly, to keep that thing running smoothly. To make sure the dollar bills don't get jammed. You got it. So how do they suggest finding and nurturing that A-team? They're really big on training, but they challenge that traditional approach. You know, like, yeah. here's a workshop, now go forth and conquer. Right, like death by PowerPoint. Exactly. They yeah. say training is only effective when it's directly tied to, like, specific business goals mm -hmm. and when employees are actually held accountable. Yes. It has to be actionable, not just informational. Exactly. And then they take it a step further. Okay. They suggest even building your own, like, dream team of advisors. Oh, I love that idea. So even if we can't, you know, have a boardroom full of industry titans. Right. We can still kind of pick their brains. Exactly. Gather wisdom from books, from mentors, even yeah. from, you know, looking at what your competitors are doing. Still like an artist. Exactly. It's <laughs> about being a sponge for knowledge and building your own personal board of experts. Okay. That is brilliant. I love that. So we've got our dream team. We're measuring our results. Our vending machine is stocked and ready to go. What else do we need to know to really level up our businesses? This is where they introduce a really cool concept they call the helicopter view. Okay, helicopter view sounds intriguing. I'm ready. Imagine this. We're soaring high above your business. Okay. We can see everything, right? The entire landscape. Okay, I'm strapped in. Give me the lay of the land. So from up here, we can see not just the internal workings of your company, okay, but also the external forces that are shaping the market. Got it. So it's like zooming out to see the whole playing field, not just the part we're standing on. Precisely. And they have this great tool to help you make sense of it all. Okay, because it could get pretty overwhelming up here, right? Like, how do we even process all this information? That's where their growth business strategy matrix comes in. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more about this matrix. Picture a grid, right? Yeah. They've divided the business landscape into nine interconnected quadrants. Nine quadrants. Okay, so it's comprehensive. It covers everything. Yeah. And each quadrant represents a different aspect of your business. Okay, so it's not just about looking outward at the market. It's about looking inward at how our businesses operate as well. You got it. They've got two main axes, external market disciplines and internal growth disciplines. Okay, so external, that's like what's happening in the world, right? Exactly. Think of those as like the wind currents and the weather patterns that you have to navigate. Okay. And then your internal disciplines those are like your engine and your controls, right? Gotcha. That allow you to steer your business in the right direction. Okay, I'm starting to see how this all fits together. So where do we even start with this matrix? Which quadrant is our first stop on this helicopter tour? They suggest starting with quadrant one, which they call the boiler room of your business. Okay, the boiler room. I like it, it sounds important. What happens there? It's all about generating revenue, right? The lifeblood of any business, as they say. Gotta keep those lights on. Exactly. Gotta keep that fire burning. And that's probably where a lot of businesses, you know, especially in tough times when sales are down, that's where the panic sets in. Absolutely. And that's why having a solid plan for generating new business is so crucial. So being proactive instead of reactive. Exactly. Always be thinking about new ways to reach customers, new markets to explore. So it's more than just like marketing and sales, right? It's about understanding your customers' needs, building those relationships. Exactly. They're big on customer relationship management in this quadrant building that system for managing those relationships, providing amazing service. Right, because a happy customer, they're going to come back for more? Exactly. 
They talk about lifetime customer value. Oh, yeah, I love that concept. That a loyal customer, someone who keeps coming back, they're worth way more than a one-time sale. 100%. Okay, so we've got the boiler room fired up. Customers are happy. What's our next stop on this helicopter tour? Let's fly over to quadrant two, which is all about differentiation. Differentiation. Okay, so this is where we figure out how to stand out from the crowd. Exactly. How are you going to capture the hearts and minds of your target market? Right, because if you're just like everyone else, why should anyone choose you? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And this is where your unique selling proposition comes back into play, that USP we talked about earlier. Right, our special sauce. Exactly. What makes you different? What makes you desirable? They actually talk about building a love mark. A love mark. Okay, I like that. It's like, yeah, it's more than just brand loyalty. It's inspiring that, you know, passionate devotion. Like a cult following, but for your business. Exactly. I love that. And they also highlight the importance of collaboration in this quadrant. Okay, collaboration. So it's not always about, like, crushing the competition. Sometimes it's about working together. Interesting. Okay. So how do they suggest finding those collaborators? Well, they say look beyond your immediate circle, right? Don't be afraid to reach out to your customers, your suppliers, even your competitors. Interesting. So it's like... Coopetition, right. That blend of cooperation and competition. Exactly. I like it. Okay, so we're differentiating, we're collaborating. What other insights does this matrix offer as we continue our helicopter ride? Well, quadrants three, five, and seven, these represent a more, I'd say, mature phase of business growth. Okay, so these quadrants are all about building a business that's going to last. Exactly. They focus on long-term sustainability, weathering those inevitable storms. Because nothing stays the same forever, right? Exactly. Yeah. So quadrant three, that's all about systems and processes, the nuts and bolts of how you actually deliver value to your customers. Okay, so it's about working smarter and not harder. Exactly. Optimizing your operations, streamlining those workflows, making sure everything's running like a well-oiled machine. Or a well-stocked vending machine, to bring it back. There you go. I love it. And a key part of that is adopting what they call best practices. Okay, so don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. Exactly. Learn from the best. Implement those proven strategies in your own company. Makes sense. What else is crucial for that long-term sustainability? They're big on technology. Staying up to date with the latest advancements because that's how you stay efficient. Right, because technology, it changes so quickly these days, it's easy to fall behind. Absolutely. And that brings us to quadrant five, which is strategically placed right in the center of the matrix. Okay, the center, that must be important. This quadrant is all about managing those inevitable cycles of growth and decline that every business goes through. So it's about understanding that business isn't always linear, right? There are gonna be ups and downs, plateaus, maybe even dips. Yeah. Exactly, they talk about creative destruction, this idea that innovation is constantly disrupting things. Right, so you can't just rest on your laurels even if you're currently killing it. Exactly. You got to be innovating, adapting, evolving to stay ahead of the curve. Otherwise, you become a dinosaur, right? <laughs> exactly. And they encourage you to be proactive about developing new products, new services, anticipating what's next. Be agile. Be forward thinking. I like it. OK, what about Quadrant 7? How does that fit into this long-term sustainability piece? Quadrant 7 is all about building those strategic alliances and partnerships. Partnerships. OK, so leveraging the power of, like, you know, Two minds are better than one. Exactly. It can be a powerful engine for growth, leveraging each other's strengths, resources, networks. Right, but finding those right partners, that's key, right? Yeah. You don't want to just team up with anyone. Absolutely. They emphasize finding partners who share your values. Right, who get you. Exactly. Hmm. Who complement your strength, who bring something unique to the table. It's like putting together a puzzle, right? Exactly. You're finding those pieces that fit perfectly to create this stronger, more resilient whole. I love that analogy, and I think that's a great way to sum up the helicopter view in general. It's about seeing how all these different aspects of your business, they're not isolated, they're all connected. They work together to drive that sustainable long-term growth. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground revenue, differentiation, streamlining, staying ahead of the curve, building partnerships. What else is in store for us as we continue our deep dive into the fixer? All right, we're back for the final leg of our deep dive into the fixer. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Especially when we're talking business growth. It really does. So we've got our helicopter view. We've explored those nine quadrants. We're feeling pretty good. What other golden nuggets did Johnston and Nell sneak into this book? One thing that really stood out to me, and they emphasize it throughout the book, 
is the importance of finding the right advisors and mentors. Oh, yeah. They're big on that dream team concept, right? Exactly. Which I love because, you know, not all of us are lucky enough to have, like, Richard Branson on speed dial. Right. But we can still learn from the best. Exactly. Even if it's from afar. Absolutely. It's about being resourceful. Okay. So how do we go about, like, building this dream team, even if we don't have those direct lines to, you know, the Oprahs of the world? Well, they suggest looking beyond your immediate circle. Yeah. Think about attending industry conferences, joining online communities, reading books. Oh, yeah. They're big on books. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's like having a conversation with those mentors. Right. Through their work. Exactly. Okay. And they actually share their own dream team list in the book. Oh, they do. Who's on there? Well, they've got Nelson Mandela, Warren Buffett. Talk about aiming high. Right. Those are some big shoes to fill. Absolutely. But the point is, it's not just about, you know, idolizing these figures. It's about understanding their journeys, their mindsets. Extracting those universal principles. Exactly. And applying them to your own life and business. And sometimes those mentors, they come in the form of, you know, peers and colleagues, too. Absolutely. People who are in the trenches with you. Exactly. People who will support you, but also challenge you, you know? Yeah, because sometimes we need that push. Absolutely. And celebrate your wins with you, too. Right, because what's the point of all this hard work if you don't have someone to high-five at the end? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they actually talk about this concept called the mastermind principle. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. It's this idea that you bring together a group of like-minded individuals. Okay. You share ideas, you offer feedback, you hold each other accountable. It's like your own personal board of directors. Exactly. I love that. So we're building our dream team, we're finding our tribe. What else do we need to know as we embark on this journey of business growth? Well, it's important to remember that success, it's not linear, right? Oh, absolutely not. It's going to be messy. It's a roller coaster. You're going to have those ups and downs. <laughs> And I think Johnston and Nell, they actually capture this beautifully with that visual they have in the book, The Cycles for Personal Success in Business. Yes. I love that visual because it really shows you, you know, it's a cycle. You yeah. go through those phases of enthusiasm, disillusionment, and then, you know, renewed passion. And I think sometimes when you're in that dip, it's easy to forget. Totally. That there's another upswing coming. Absolutely. Yeah. And they encourage you to use those dips, those moments of disillusionment, as opportunities to reevaluate, to seek guidance, to come back even stronger. Yeah, because what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Exactly. And they even have this interesting thought that successful people, they often create their own problems. Oh, tell me more about that. That sounds counterintuitive. It's not that they enjoy chaos, but they recognize that, you know, solving problems, that's where the growth happens. So it's about being proactive. Exactly. Yeah. Having that problem-solving mindset. Okay, so we're not just waiting for problems to hit us in the face. We're actively looking for ways to challenge ourselves, to grow. Exactly. And then when those challenges inevitably arise, responding thoughtfully. Yeah, they make a great distinction between reacting and responding. Absolutely. Reacting is like that knee-jerk. Exactly. Responding is like, okay, let's take a beat. Let's analyze this. Exactly. And remembering that. You can't always control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond. Love that. So we're building our dream team. We're embracing those inevitable ups and downs. We're responding thoughtfully to challenges. What's the final takeaway from the fixer? What do they really want to leave us with? Well, they leave us with a really powerful question, and it's this. What will your legacy be? Ooh, that's a big one. It is. It's about recognizing that we all have the power to make a difference. So it's bigger than just like building a successful business. Exactly. It's about building a meaningful life, leaving the world a little bit better than you found it. I love that. It's about purpose. Absolutely. And they remind us that it doesn't have to be complicated. Right, because sometimes we get caught up in like, it has to be this big grand gesture. Right. But sometimes... It's the simplest ideas, the smallest acts of kindness. That have the biggest impact. Exactly. I love that. This has been such an inspiring conversation. I'm feeling energized. I'm ready to go out there and, you know, conquer the business world. Me too. It's a great <laughs> reminder that we've got this right. We do. We've got our dream teams. We've got our helicopter view. We're embracing those ups and downs. And we're asking ourselves that powerful question. What will our legacy be? Absolutely. So to our listeners out there, what resonated most with you today? What simple idea are you going to implement, like today, to start creating that legacy of success? Until next time, happy diving. Happy diving.